Hey, what is up guys? Eric Thane here from Cinema Mastery and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about three ways to become a better visual storyteller with camera movement. Let's do it. So when we talk about uh, being a better filmmaker, and I've talked about this a lot in past videos, how filmmaking really is about storytelling, right? As a filmmaker, the goal is to tell better stories. The better stories you can tell, the better filmmaker you become. And every aspect of filmmaking, whether it's your camera settings or the gear that you use or the, the lights that you're using, the, the, the camera movement, the composition, all of those things are designed to be in service of the story. So story is king, right? Story is the most important thing and everything kind of filters down from there. So if you ever have questions about what you should do or how you should light a scene or what kind of camera movement you should use, it always comes back to the story. And I've got three tips for you that will help you to take your camera movement to the next level and make sure that you're telling better stories with your films. So tip number one is to understand the different types of stabilization. So stabilization goes hand in hand with camera movement because the type of stabilization that you're using for your camera or the type of camera support that you're using actually has a big impact on the type of movement that you're going to get. So there's a few different types of stabilization or camera support that you can use. The first is gonna be what we would call a locked off shot. So locked off is like having the camera on a tripod. There's no movement, everything is just steady and still. It's not handheld, There's not the camera's not flying around, it's just on a tripod. And this is a, a type of movement that you'll see actually a lot in movies, it's pretty common. And it has a certain feel to it, it has a certain vibe that you get from, uh, from that locked off look. You'll see this in movies, you'll see it in commercials, um, but it all just depends on, you know, what you're going for with that shot. The second type of stabilization is handheld. So this is would be where you're either just hand holding the camera or you've got it on maybe like an easy rig or some other like uh, type of support that you're using to hold the camera, but it's not smooth, right? We're going for that kind of shaky effect. Now the important thing to keep in mind with handheld type movement is that you still need to have the camera supported and stabilized. A lot of filmmakers make the mistake of just when they hear handheld, they think, well, it's handheld, right? So you just take the camera and you hold it. Now, you can kind of get away with this a little bit with, um, you know, image stabilization in cameras today. Uh, if you have a newer camera that has that like optical Im image stabilization built in, sometimes you can get away with it. However, in most cases, when you're going handheld, it doesn't really mean bare handheld. You want to get some sort of uh, easy rig or stabilizer of some sorts on it. Or for a quick hack, you can take your camera strap and throw it around your neck and just pull the camera tight. That even sometimes will do the trick. So even though it's called handheld, we're going for that handheld movement. Um, it's still the camera needs to be supported and stabilized. And then the third type of stabilization is a flying shot. So this is what you would get from like a motorized gimbal or a steady cam or a drone or a dolly, that kind of equipment where the camera is stable, almost like a locked off shot, like on a tripod, but it's flying around. It's actually moving around and getting these smooth moving shots that are, that are really popular today. And you'll see a lot of them on YouTube. Now, even though the camera is locked off and also moving around, kind of like a locked off shot and a handheld shot, it gives you a totally different vibe because of the smoothness of that movement. So number two, once you understand the different types of stabilization, the most important thing when it comes to telling stories with camera movement is understanding how to motivate your movement. So motivation in filmmaking basically means that you are giving your shots purpose behind them. There's a reason for doing it the way that you're doing it. Now motivation can happen in lighting, it can happen in your camera settings, in movement, in basically every aspect of filmmaking. And it basically means that whatever is happening in the scene motivates how you shoot it. So for example, in camera movement, you might wanna have uh, a camera moving a certain way in order to track a subject that you're following, or to create a certain emotion, or to you know mimic a certain style of cinematography. So there's a few different ways that you can motivate camera movement. One is based on the emotion in the scene. So if you have a very dramatic scene where there's a lot of things happening happening, you might use a more handheld movement that's going to feel uh, a little bit more chaotic or, you know, like the subject is not really like thinking straight or something like that. So you'd have like a handheld movement that would make more sense there. Um, or if you had 
a situation where everything was clean and calm and you know you're working with a character that's just stable and everything's good then you might put the camera on a tripod and go for more of a locked off shot that's going to feel a little bit more calm and stable now you can base it off of emotion you can also base it off of the style of cinematography so you'll see different styles of cinematography out there that are that'll use different types of movement and stabilization so for example an action film or something that's really like high impact really high energy will often use a lot of handheld movement and then maybe even some flying movement as well whereas you know comedies something that's just like funny will often use locked off shots you can also mimic different um, directors that like to use different styles of stabilization so you might you know if you're going for like a Wes Anderson style look you're probably going to use a tripod or like David Fincher again uses tripods and a lot of panning movement in his shots so the style of the cinematography can motivate the type of stabilization and movement that you use. And then the third thing that you can base it on is the action in the scene. So when you're deciding on the movement for a shot, whether you should dolly in or if you should pan or if you should do a whip pan or whatever, you can base it on what is actually happening in the scene. So for example, let's say you're doing like a pan shot to establish a new scene at the beginning of a movie. Instead of just doing a regular pan to the location, which honestly just feels unmotivated because it's just a camera movement just for the sake of moving the camera, you might actually follow a subject into that scene and uh, make it feel like that camera movement is motivated because it's actually following them in order to establish the scene in that shot. Okay, and number three is to use the right movement for the shot. So we talked about stabilization, we talked about motivation, now let's talk about the different types of movements. So there's basically three different types of movements that you can use with your camera. Number one is lateral movements. Lateral movements are gonna be like dollying in or out or trucking left or right, where you're actually moving the camera forward or backwards or left or right. Or maybe jibbing, which is gonna be moving the camera up and down, right? So these would be like lateral movements where the camera is just moving steady in one direction. Now these can be used in a lot of different situations. For example, a dolly in might be used to focus on the uh, the emotional state of a character and what they're thinking about. Whereas a dolly out is gonna feel more like a uh, character's lonely or there's uh, something going on in their life that they're trying to figure out. Uh, dollying left and right is just kind of used for, typically used for tracking a subject as they're you know running or a train going by or something like that, that you can kind of follow the subject with that. And then jibbing up and down is typically used for establishing shot for different locations where they've got the camera on a crane. You might be going up and down to showcase uh, that location where we're gonna be setting up the scene. The second type of movement is a panning shot. So panning is when the camera is stable, is staying still, but you're turning the camera left or right or up and down. So this would be a panning or tilting type shot. Now this can be used in a lot of different scenarios, although you won't see this type of movement used actually as much. It might be used to pan by some objects um, sitting around just to you know showcase a location again. Or maybe if you've got something that's really tall, you might tilt the camera up towards it to showcase just how tall that object is. But like I said, you don't see this as much in modern cinematography as you'll see that kind of lateral movement that we talked about. And last but not least is a zoom type movement. Now this one is probably the least common of the three, but this basically just means zooming in or out on your subject and you would see that a lot more in older cinema but nowadays you don't see that very much the one situation where you will see it more often typically is when you take that zoom and you pair it with a dolly effect which creates that vertigo effect where you're dollying in and zooming out at the same time and it makes the background look like it's separating or coming closer together so you will see that in situations where something crazy happens with the character will kind of go for that vertigo effect but other than that you don't see zooming happening a lot in cinematography. So there you go, there's three ways to become a better visual storyteller using camera movement. I hope that was helpful. Now, if you wanna learn the real techniques and principles that go into creating true cinematography and making films that are not only cinematic and really movie-like, but also tell amazing stories, I wanna invite you to check out the link down below for my Cinema Mastery course. Inside the course, I go in depth into all of the principles of cinematography and the techniques that you need to use in order to create work that looks truly cinematic. So your camera settings and your composition, 
camera movement, how to use the principles of cinematography, editing, lighting, and all of those things in order to create really truly cinematic work. So check that out down at the link below. If you're not ready to jump into the full course yet, I do have a free one hour training where I go in depth into some of my most important cinema hacks that are gonna help you to create a cinematic look as fast as possible. So you can watch that, check that out. And then if you're ready later, you can jump into the full course at cinemamastery.com. So check out the link down below. If you guys have any questions about this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll make sure to check those out and we'll see you next week.